Hi, I'm Phil from TurboMini.com and today we're going to be talking about turbo oil feed, oil drains and water connections. So as usual, grab a brew and let's get started. So we've got a bit of a selection of turbos here today, some popular ones used on there, you'll find used on minis, so we've got a GT17, GT20 uh, and a good old prehistoric T3 here. I'll talk about them individually because there are some differences in uh, the requirements for each turbo. Right, so I'll start with the old T3 first. So here we go, this is dead simple, there's no water connections on this one, there's no water killed car, so it's just an oil drain at the bottom and an oil feed at the top there uh, the oil feeds 3 8 UNF and it just comes in on a solid on a rigid pipe uh, and a banjo bolt into there uh, if you look at the picture that will be popping up now you can see the rigid type pipe that's on there that's, so that's what comes on the the Metro Turbo and the ERA Mini Turbo most people do away with that and use a braided type pipe because the solid pipes can fracture so that, like I say solid pipe 3 8 UNF into there no water connections and then the oil drains at the bottom comes out of that plate and into that silicon hose there. This is a GT17, probably one of the most popular turbos people are using on boosted minis at the minute. Uh, the oil feed comes in the top there, again that's a rigid pipe but you'll, most people they'll uh, use a braided aftermarket fitting for that. Uh, so that's an M12 fitting and then the drains at the bottom as usual, so that's about a 16mm oil drain there. And then there's a water fitting there and a water fitting there and they are M14 so that's got a water cooled car on this unit so you plumb that into your cooling system and that passes water through the car uh, and that actually extends the life of the journal you don't have to connect the water fittings it'll still operate without it but it's there for a reason and it will benefit uh, it'll extend the lifespan of the turbo if you use those water connections so it's well worth connecting them up Lastly we've got a GT2056, uh, there's no water cooled car on this, so it's just got a uh, oil feed into the top there, uh, the GT20 is an M10 oil feed that goes into there, <coughs> and then we've got the drain at the bottom, uh, we've got a nice uh, billet oil drain there, that just bolts onto there, uh, it's about 15mm ID for that, uh, and then we've got a nice braided oil line. If you're using uh, these braided type fittings with the AN fittings on, uh, AN4 is the correct size for those. You don't need anything bigger. Uh, and as regards oil pressure, for a plain journal bearing turbo, uh, you can use up to about 65 psi maximum oil pressure. Well, your engine doesn't need any more than that, so as long as you're not exceeding that, you'll get no issues, you don't need to use an oil restrictor an oil restrictor is for ball bearing car turbos uh, you're pretty unlikely to be using one of them on your Mini as most of them are generally a lot bigger units than you'll ever need for, for your air series so this is an aftermarket oil feed pipe you can get these made up in pretty much any length you want with whatever thread you need uh, so one end obviously needs to suit your turbo and the other end needs to screw into the block where the oil pressure warning switch is because that's where you usually take the feed from uh, the feed in the Mini block is an uh, eighth MPT, so that's eighth MPT on there, and then the other end you obviously get that, like I say, to suit your turbo. This is the place where the switch for the oil pressure warning light uh, screws in. So this is where you would take your oil feed from for your turbo. So that's eighth MPT. So your turbo oil feed would screw in there, and then it'd go around the side of the block with the braided pipe to round to the turbo. Obviously if you want to keep your, your switch, like you say, for your oil pressure warning light, you can put a T-piece in, so you screw, screw an 8th MPT adapter in, and then put a T on, uh, and take, put your pressure sw switch on the end, and then take your um, braided feed off the other side of it. So if you're using the good old T3, then uh, the oil drain's obviously sorted for you. It's got the fitting already, and the pipe, and it comes onto a plate. This little plate actually mounts onto the back of your block, where the mechanical fuel pump would usually be. Uh, the turbo engine uses an electric fuel pump so you don't need that point so that bolts where the mechanical fuel pump would be and that hose actually connects onto that the turbo sits up here and the hose comes down into that and it drains back into the block and obviously drops into the sump so you don't need to worry about 
oil return because that's all sorted. If you're using an aftermarket turbo that's not standard fitment on your Mini, then something like this GT20, then you can pick up a, an oil drain like that and you'll have to, you could possibly reuse that or you're going to have to fabricate something. So you could use that and then a length of silicon hose into there, but it will depend where your turbo sits. So it's a matter of fabricating something up yourself for that. It's not something you can buy off the shelf, so there's a bit of work involved in doing that. So as I was saying before, this is the back of the block where the mechanical fuel pump would usually mount. Uh, but as we run an electric pump on the turbo engine, that wasn't required. So this little plate here bolts onto there. And that's where our oil drain from our turbo goes back into the block there, then into the sump. What you'll find if you're fitting an aftermarket turbo, if you're making your own manifold or something, or it's an odd unit that's nothing available for, you might find that the turbo oil drain, you can't get it, the turbo sits too low and you can't use that oil drain. So you'll have to then tap the gearbox casing and use an AN fitting into the gearbox casing. Or you could run a line round into the speedo housing on the end of the gearbox and back into there. But whatever you do, the turbo oil drain must be lower than the turbo. It mustn't go back uphill. The turbo the drain is uh, gravity is drained by gravity, it's not under pressure. So if there's any uphill, uh, it will just back up in the drain. So it needs to be constantly that downhill, it should never uh, go back up again. So wherever you drain it, and it obviously wants to be higher than the oil level to drain as well. It doesn't want to be going into the sump in under the actual height of the oil. It wants to be above the height of the oil. And like I say, it needs to go downhill, never uphill. If you are moving the, the, loca the location of the oil drain, into like the gearbox casing or the speedo end and you're going to use these AN tight fittings uh, AN10 is the correct size for that uh, that's just shy of a 16mm internal diameter so that's uh, plenty adequate so this is with the T3 mounted up you can see the oil feed comes in the top there and it drops down through the car comes out the drain there and then round there and obviously into our little plate that sits on the back of the block there Something else to note is that uh, if you're making your own oil drain up or you're replacing the, the factory one, you must use a, a not just ordinary silicon, you must use a silicon hose that's fluoro lined, so it's actually oil resistant, so it's made to carry oil. If you use a normal silicon hose, it'll only last so long and then it'll degrade, so make sure it's the fluoro lined type. If you are using a turbo with a water cooled car, such as the GT17, it's worth when you mount the turbo up on the manifold is to uh, Rotate the centre housing and actually clock the housing so it's about 15 degrees off horizontal. So where your water feed, your water feed on one side is about 15 degrees lower than the water feed on the other side. So bring the cold water into the bottom one, and the hot water will come out the top. And because of the slight angle, it'll actually call it'll actually uh, cause what's called a thermo siphon. So when you actually shut the engine down, the water will continue to heat inside the car, uh, and that'll rise uphill and it'll actually draw the cold water in to the connection at the bottom so it'll actually still continue to self-siphon and draw cold water through the car to help to cool it after shutdown so uh, that's uh, really beneficial and up to about around about 15 degrees is uh, sort of the optimum angle for that so these are just like a banjo fitting through there and so you can just buy new ones and then with a like a barb on and then you can just run your rubber hoses to that you, you want to put your turbo uh, you can, there's quite a few ways of doing it but the way I ran mine was to take it off the heater tap uh, by number four on the cylinder head through the turbo out of the turbo and then through a heater and then back into your bottom hose if you're not running a heater you can obviously just go straight through your turbo and into the bottom hose if you're enjoying these tech videos that I'm making uh, please leave a comment in the comment section or subscribe if you haven't already give us a thumbs up uh, let me know what you think if you want me to cover something particular that's the sort of area that I'm tending to cover then uh, leave me a comment and I'll see what I can do. Uh, as usual, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Cheers.